some old school editing gear from a couple of production companies that uh, have shut down operation. One of them donated the uh, the 1800 camera and the uh, and the three quarter inch recorder and a few other gadgets. Another company donated a bunch of other stuff like the SLVR5 that I repaired and some other stuff. And yesterday. One of the guys shows up with a carload of equipment and he had a couple of video title makers and some special effects generators. So I got this t title maker to look at this time. I also have a TM2000, which was the upgraded version of this, which is one that I actually own. So now I have two TM2000s, uh, Steadicam Junior, a Sigma Video Pro effects board. I mean, these are all more consumer oriented devices, but uh, now they're mine to dispose of, so I'm going to be putting these things up for sale either on Craigslist or on uh, eBay. So I'm not certainly not going to destroy them, but let's take a look at how they work for those that are not old enough to remember Videonics and what Videonics did. They were a consumer electronics company, but they actually turned out some pretty good quality products. So for today's demonstration, I've just got a nice live view of a tree in my front yard that I'm going to use as my reference image. All the video that I'm going to be feeding through these devices is going to come from this camera here. I also got a nice tripod with a nice fluid head as well. So that camera is going to be producing the signals that we are working with today and I'll point it around at various things. Maybe point it across the street at some trees and so forth but uh, that's where our images are going to be coming from they're going to be coming from that camera and we're going to have a live view and we're going to feed it through some of this old school video processing equipment so that we can see exactly what type of effects and um, what these devices were capable of should be interesting I've never had one of these as I say I had the, the the TM 2000 was the first character generator titler that I own so this will be a first for me to see this one. As you can see, this equipment is all, it's almost brand new looking. It's even got the manual and everything. So whoever buys this off of me, providing that everything works, I mean, it probably doesn't have a lot of value to everybody, but anybody who's into old vintage equipment that might like some of this equipment is going to be available for sale in its original box. So here's the Videonics title maker, the original title maker before the upgrade to the, the Title Maker 2000, which I'll also show you. I'm just looking at the paperwork that's in here. He'd sent it off to Videonics and it was returned to sender. So I'm wondering why he returned it in the first place. It was insured for $500, but it was shipped, he shipped it into Videonics for some reason, and it was returned to sender. So I'm wondering maybe if this thing packed it in and uh, it was sent in for service and uh, it was sent back to him. Anyway, let's see if it works. I don't think I need to include any of this stuff when I sell it. It doesn't need to uh, know who the original owner of it was. So we'll just shred that. Okay, let's, uh, let's check this thing out and uh, see if it works. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug the camera into the inputs on the back of here and the audio outputs don't do anything. They just, the audio just loops through it. That's just to maintain simplicity in a uh, consumer world. It has S video in and out, composite video in and out, and audio in and out. I never ever used the audio functions when I used to use one of these units as a titler. I never used the audio function whatsoever because I had a separate mix board. So let's get the video going through this thing so we can see what it does. Well, this one appears to just have a blue screen and doesn't appear to do anything. I can't turn it on. I can't press demo. I think this one's broken. So this one may uh, get the hammer of death. Um, that may be why he had a he had a uh, uh, return to Videonics. Um, he had a, a card in there that had two Videonics and uh, had his name and everything on it and it was checked return to sender. It, this may have gone in for service and uh, it was out of warranty and Videonics just said sorry we're not gonna fix it 
And that's why you've got a Tattle Maker 2000, because this one packed it in. But uh, it's interesting, when I unplug it, I, the screen that was blue goes out. When I plug it in, I get video for a second, and then it goes blue, as you can see. Right? If I unplug it, I plug it in, and now I get a, you know, now I get a green screen this time. But when I first plugged it in there, I wonder if it's the AC adapter. Output 12 volts AC. So the the the, um, the unit uses 12 volts AC. So it won't be the AC adapter because that's just the transformer on this thing. The everything's going to be internal on this thing. Regulation is going to be internal. As you can see, when I first plug it in, the the bands are caused by the shutter on the camera. Maybe if I turn my shutter down from 1 25th of a second down to 1 60th of a second, we can eliminate the shutter completely. There we go. 1 60th of a second, or even if I take it down to 1 30th of a second, I will eliminate it. But we're shooting at 60 frames, so we'll leave it at 1 60th. But as you can see, plug it in, I get a blue screen. I get a blue screen of death. Let's just, uh, let's crack this thing open and see whether this thing's got something in it that uh, it, we can find interesting. So, there goes my video cord that's going to the camera, which is kind of tight. That doesn't sound good. Sounds like there's something loose in there already. Let me uh, find a screwdriver and we'll crack this thing open. Well, there's a sign of quality right there. At least it's not made in China. This would have been probably American made, you know. Videonics was a company out of the States. Um, see if it says anything on the box, but I, I doubt very much that this was made in China. This was more than likely made in USA and assembled in Mexico. Yes, yes, I was right. This is quality. I don't even think I want to put a hammer through this thing because here we go. This is Videonics. Here's something you, you never, ever, ever see today. This Videonics product is designed and made in the United States and it's assembled in Mexico. So, in Mexico, they put the boards into the unit itself. The unit itself is actually American made and these units were actually pretty good quality. That's why we all use them. I have a TM2000, I have the MX1 mixer, again. It's really good quality stuff. It's just that this one's broken. We're going to see if we can figure out why it's broken. And here's the inside of this thing. Now it's got a battery in it. I wonder if the battery has gone dead. It's from 1991. This is the keyboard portion. And the, the keyboard portion of this is going to be the same as the keyboard for the TM2000 because the units themselves look identical. The, the big difference is the main board is a little different. The TM2000 had a preview output. This one doesn't. The, TM, the TM2000 had a preview output as well so you could have a second monitor so that you could be typing your titles away while video was recording. You know, so it was, it was more designed for a small TV station and, and TV stations could actually use it. Uh, and the MX-1, because you could be doing a live production on air, say to your local community station, you could be doing your Wayne's World broadcast live, and you could be switching multiple cameras, you could switch four cameras together, and have your title, and then have your output going into the TM-2000, and your character generator operator could be previewing his titles and everything on his own monitor without affecting the output, and then when the director said, throw up title two, he could hit the button, and it would bring the title up on the screen, and then take it off, whereas this one could not. So let's take a look at this thing and uh, just see what it has in it. But let's just take a close look at this board and just take a look at our electronics on this thing. Okay, the heart of this is a Motorola MC68HC001FN8. 
This is the microprocessor. This is the brains of the whole unit here. And uh, Videonics, I guess, has their, they have their own chip here. This is the type. This will be a custom ASIC. Because it's just marked VDNX09-01 titler. And AMI was the company that made that for them. And here's another custom chip over here. This is one that they've had made in-house for them. It's another AMI titler. It's made by AMI, but it's made for Videonics. Copyright 1992. This chip was made in Japan. Got a couple of other support components in here. And a battery. A couple, a couple of other Motorola chips here. Here. You now these ones are memory down here. And this is probably the graphics processor. I'm going to go out on the limb and say that's probably the graphics processor there, but I don't know. I haven't looked up any of these numbers on here. But here we go. Titler board. Videonics Incorporated. Made in the USA. And that's something that you'd, you'd never see that today. Well, you might. I shouldn't say you'd never see that today because if you... I think it probably if you, if you opened up one of the boards in a GM or a Ford vehicle... Um, you know, one of the one of the computers, you'd probably find that their boards are made in the USA. But uh, other than for the auto industry and aviation and maybe some scientific equipment, uh, there's not a lot that's made in Canada or the States. At least when it comes to consumer and video equipment, it's all coming out of China. I'm going to check a few of these components out here. I'm just going to check the connections on these regulators and we'll maybe, maybe look at a couple capacitors in here and see if the ESR has gone a little high on them. And I suspect maybe that battery is, uh, is gone bad. Check the number out on this battery. This is also not a standard size lithium battery. This is a BR2330. And uh, that's a little bit bigger than your standard button cells that you use in things like your uh, key fobs for your car. Most people are familiar with the standard size, the CR2032. As you can see, this cell is quite a bit bigger than a 2032. So that's a, that's a little different. That's one that you'd find more on computer motherboards. But you're not going down to the dollar store and buying three of them for a buck twenty-five like you can those. Which, yes, that's what these cost. Dollar twenty-five for three CR2032s. And no, they don't last as long. Uh, in my car key fob, I think I got three years out of the original Panasonic uh, battery before I had to replace it. And uh, But going into the local store and buying a Panasonic one or an EverReady was like $10. And I bought three for $1.25 and they last, uh, they've, they're lasting about a year each because uh, I bought a pack of three of them when my car was three years old and I just changed the second one so I'm on to the third one now so uh, they last about a year each so they don't last as long but hey a buck 25 for three versus ten dollars for one I'll, I'll take the buck 25 for three and I'll just carry the spares in my glove box now you remember the saying never overlook the obvious this battery the voltage has dropped and it should be about 3.2 volts when uh, a lithium battery is good. They should measure about 3.2 volts. This was down at 3.03. So we know that this battery is weak. So I'm just going to try plugging this thing in. I've got my video cables hooked up here. We'll look at the monitor. Remember what it was doing before. It was just going to a blue screen of death, right? So we'll plug the power back in. And uh, watch what happens. Got a video goes to the blue screen of death and then it comes back to video and the unit is now off I'm just going to try putting the keyboard back on to this thing and see if it will actually turn on without this battery in it now remember I haven't done anything to it other than remove the battery so we'll put it back in place and snap the connector back together I think that's it there it's back together there turn this thing over plug my monitor in I have to retrieve my long camera cable again because my camera cable is almost at the limit and the weight of the cable is 
dragging it away. Okay, power. Okay, power's gone, it resets, it goes out. I've got my video back. And what happens if I press the power button on this thing? It turns on, it works. <laughs> All that was wrong with this thing was the battery was weak. So now it's everything's wiped out. So if I wanna type a message to my YouTube viewers, we'll type in something here. Because the blue screen comes up for you to type. And then you can select what type of border and what type of effects you want and what you want your background to be. So if I select pattern here on here, right now you'll see that it's got a solid pattern. And if I use the joystick controls here, I can move through the patterns. I can have colored lines, I can have video as my background. So if I say that's okay, I press, um, I think it's new line. Yeah, that takes me out of there. Okay, now I can type in, hello YouTubers. This is a demo. of an old Videonics title maker that had a dead battery. There. That's uh, my message. Now, if I want that to display on the screen, I just press the play button, and I can I can tell it what I want to do. So, if I want my effects to fade in and out, for example, if I select the effects button on this thing by pressing effects in, I can now pick how I want it to appear. I want it to appear as a fade. So, I select fade, and if I want my effects out, I want it to appear as a fade. And basically, what I have to do though is I have to create a new page ahead of this one because, um, so I hit the new page button here. Okay, there we go. And then I can go down to the end of this message and I can select a new page at the end of this message. Press the new page button on here. So what I've basically done, and I'm just doing that by navigating and pressing the new page button. Uh, what I've done is I've now created, now see this, is the, this was the beauty of the TM2000 because this is the information that would come up on the, on the preview monitor but the video would be being fed through until you actually went live. So in this case, if you were gonna fade up on that and you wanted to uh, have your title fade up, you'd go into your, your blank page, which was just a, a transparent video and you'd hit play. And see the infinite means it's not gonna go for a specific time. But if I want this to say, if I want this to go for 10 seconds, I could go down to that page and I could go to my effects in and out and I could select the time, if I go down to here, how do I get down there? I think it's uh, tab, it's the tab button. Okay, so when I hit the tab button, I can go down here and I can select how I want it to appear. Do I want it to be on for a specific time? Do I want it to roll up the screen? Do I want it to crawl? For example, if I get out of there by hitting my, uh, I think it's my, is it my new line button? Yeah, for example, if I want this one, if I want the title to roll up the screen instead of instead of um, instead of dissolve, well, I'll show you. In this mode here, I press play, and I would now have my video feeding through, and my titles would be all preloaded. In the case of the 2000, this could be done live, but in the case of the old, the ver original version, you had to set up for it. You couldn't do it live because you only had one loop in. Now, if I by pressing the play button on here, if I tell it I want. To move to the next page i just press the play button and when i press the play button there it goes it'll fade up and then i hit it twice there but uh, if i go back here if i go back up to the top okay, if i want to play it i press play and it will fade up i don't have it set to stay on the screen for any length of time uh where are we here i gotta go to that next page and tell it infinite because i've got it set for a time of zero that's what I did. Okay, this one here, you see it's set for a time of zero. But if I want that to stay up for, say, 10 seconds, for example, I could hit my um, tab key. Oh, I have to hit my effect in. 
and I can hit my tab key and I can change the time or if I want it to be infinite I can select infinite new line and now when I start it up and I hit play it will stay on the screen until I say to take it off and then when I press play again it will fade out now if I wanted that to scroll up the screen or scroll across the screen I could go back in I can get a new line to get back out here I could go back into that title which is I've just selected here and I could hit my effect in was it effect in yes and move my tab button here tab down to the bottom of the screen here and I could use the arrow key here to move that over to where it says crawl or roll crawl is the next one and then go and hit new line and that'll take it off the screen and then reselect my top starting page hit play my video is playing through and now it's time to do my title roll and I press play again and you'll see that the titles will roll up and I can change the speed of that so to get out of that if I hit back to new line if I wanted to change the speed I could go back down to that page and hit my I think it's my effect in or yeah my effect in I go down to tab and tab it down here and I can move this down to the turtle right got a turtle on one side and a rabbit on the other so if I want it to crawl slow I could do it slow like that and uh, then hit my new page and start my start my my, my uh, crawl and now as you can see the crawl is going to be or the roll is going to be very slow So that's how that works. If I want to do a crawl, and then of course I could fade it out. If I want to do a crawl, if I want it to be a crawl across the screen instead of a roll, I would hit my effects in, I hit my tab key, go down to here, change it to a crawl, and if I want it to be faster than a, than a, a turtle, if I say picked a speed of number five, a new line, and then when I start my crawl up, I hit play. I'm waiting to start my title. Nothing's going to happen until I press play again because I'm starting my blank page. I press play and my crawl will start. And I can pick where I want. Yeah, I know I've got some mistakes in there. But uh, if I want to pick where that goes, so if I hit new page and I go down here and I go into effects in and I select crawl and I have to I can tell I know I can tell it where it goes on the page uh, position here we go position is down I think that's the way I do it new line yeah down that should be that should be the bottom of the screen now if I remember correctly I can center top I think that's bottom of the screen there we go that you see that's on the bottom of the screen now that's that's how you do a crawl on one of these Videonics um, title makers. And the, the, again, the TM2000 was exactly the same as far as the way it operated than the Videonics title maker. No different other than the fact that the TM2000, I think it maybe had a few more fonts, but uh, it had the, the monitor and the preview out. Whereas this one basically, the, the preview out on the, the the uh, TM2000 would operate the same as this. So if you were only running in a single monitor setup, you could just use the preview out instead of using the, the main video out, and it would give you your overlay so that you could set your graphics up. So you could use the TM2000 exactly the same way as this. It just had an isolated output so that you could preview your graphics while not affecting your line out video, if you can follow me there. Okay, what else does this piece of junk do? Well, I guess maybe if I just press the demo button here, you guys will be able to see what it can do. So let's press the demo and watch it. <clears throat> you can do a fade up and a fade out. I don't. I, I have never watched the demo on this thing, but I think it'll do overlays. If I, it'll do overlays over the uh, 
the incoming video and it'll do it over colored screens and the whole bit. There you go. So as you can see you could do multicolor, not just single color. You could do all kinds of cool graphics. And believe it or not, I used to see message boards that were driven by these things. Like presentation displays, this is going way back, but you know, you'd have a, a store, for example. Now everything is all done with, uh, with, with kiosks and video players. But back in the earlier days, in the 90s and so forth, you'd go buy an electronic store and they'd have all their sales. They'd have they'd have their, they, they, they'd have uh, basically just a title maker plugged into a, a TV and they'd just have it playing like that. They'd have their, their advertising basically, right, on this. So there you go. Now it'll do it over. It shows you at 720 by 48 lines of resolution and you can So early users will remember the video toaster on the Amiga computer, I think it was the Amiga. And everybody was crowing about, oh, I got this fancy video toaster so I can, I can put nice titles on my video. Well, this basically when it was released was dubbed the standalone toaster. Toaster wasn't very, it, was, it wasn't like today with nonlinear editing. It was, uh, you could do some special effects with it, but it was more for most of the people that used it was for uh, titles because it, it generated such nice titles. Prior to the video title maker and uh, the toaster for the PC or the, the uh, Commodore Amiga world, um, our titles were pretty crude. Go back and look at the SLHF 1000. For example, and look at the crappy titles on that, or look at the crappy titles that a lot of the camcorders had. You know, you had you had A to Z, capital letters only, and they were uh, what uh, three by f or five by seven matrix, I think, just block letters. They were just god awful. There was no fonts. So this unit was the first unit that actually gave us fonts. corny demo. I probably spent more money doing the demo than the unit. No, just kidding. Anyway, that's that's the look at this thing. I'll just let this demo run for you guys so you can, can see the whole demo here. And uh, 
now that this thing's fixed, I can sell it. And you guys want to buy it? It's going to put a new battery in it and put it back together and uh, we will be done with this thing. Next will be the uh, next video is going to be, I think that uh, that SEMA video magic. The uh, They call it Digital Video Movie Studio and Audio Mixer. Uh, let's see what it can do. Let's see how bad it can make a picture. I've never used one of those, by the way. I never, I never, never bought into the, um, I never bought into those effects generators because I would see how bad they looked on other productions that I would get in from time to time to to, to make copies of it, edit, and so forth. And uh, you know, let's put it this way: it was usually it was usually the Indian weddings that were. Uh, they would use those things and have like you know eight freeze frames around there or nine freeze frames around the border and a small picture in the middle and they'd think that, that was cool and have all these have all the the, uh, the the strobing and stuff and I thought it just made the video look tacky when I did my presentations I liked my stuff to look like it was on TV and uh, the uh, tacky little home video products of the day you know the, the you know half of a still image for example um no it uh, didn't do much for me okay i think that's the uh yep that's pretty much the uh the little demo here so that will uh, end this video thanks for watching